All right. Boys, good afternoon. Good afternoon, girls. How are you? Hope you are well. Hope you are fine. This afternoon, we'll carry on with our math lesson. Okay. So today, we'll be looking at measurement. Before now, we talked about uh, statistics. We talked about data handling. We dealt with statistics. We thought out the whole of data handling. So this afternoon, we're looking at measurement. All right. So before I carry on again, Sabdo Jafar is my name, and measurement is today's topic. So at the end of today, um, at the end of today's lesson, you should be able to determine the different type of polygons and the formula for calculating the surface area of polygons and solve problems regarding to polygons. Okay. So we're starting off with area of polygons. First of all, what is area? So area is a two-dimensional space. Area is a two-dimensional space inside a boundary, a flat object. Again, area is a two-dimensional space inside a boundary of a flat object. It is measured in squared units. So area, we said, is a two-dimensional space. So when you talk about area, we talk about two-dimensional space. A 2D shape, a 2D space. So 2D shapes, we talk about area. And then with 3D shapes, we talk about volume. Okay. With 2D shapes, we talk about area. Okay. So when you say area, area is a dimensional space inside the boundary of a flat object. It's measured in unit square. So area is measured in unit square, like centimeter squared or meter squared or millimeter squared. So area that measure in unit squared. And volumes are measured in um, unit um, cubed. Cubed, cubed units. Okay. Now, what are these polygons we look at? First of all, we look at um, the square. Now, this is this is shape of the square. For the square, it has equal sides. All sides are equal. So we name it side side. So this side goes to this side. This side goes to this side. So all sides are equal. We say the area of the square. When the area of the square, area of the square is what side squared. The area of the square is side squared. Okay. The a equals to x squared, side squared. Okay, and then for a rectangle, the next one, rectangle. For rectangle, um, this is the shape of a rectangle. So if you find the area of a rectangle, so we say the length or the width or the breadth multiplied by the height. The width or the breadth multiplied by the height. Or better still, the length multiplied by the width. Or the length multiplied by the height. Okay. So length is always the longer one, okay? So in this case, if here is height, you can have it as the breadth. So the breadth is the width. So we must apply this length with this length to give us the area of the rectangle, okay? And then we triangle. So this is the triangle. So if you have a triangle with the height perpendicular to the base, when you have a triangle with height perpendicular to the base, so you think the area of the triangle will be half, times the base times the perpendicular height. Okay, when you have a triangle, they have, area, they have its height perpendicular. This is the perpendicular, meaning it makes 90 degrees to the base. So we're saying the area, to calculate the area of such triangle, we say what area is what half multiplied by the base multiplied by the height. So that gives us the area for that triangle. Okay. Now, if the triangle has no perpendicular height, if the triangle has no perpendicular height, then there will be an included angle. If the, if the triangle has no perpendicular height, then there will be an included angle. And then in that case, we will calculate our area as same half multiplied by the product of the two sides multiplied by the included angle. So if height is not given, then that means two sides will be given and an included angle. It can be given two sides and an included angle. So if the height is not given, you can also say area equals to use the area rule. That's we call the area rule. And the area rule is half A, half A B sine C, or half B C sine A, or half A C sine B, as the case may be. But for now, we think our triangle is plotting a triangle with a, with a height perpendicular to the base 
with the area of the curve triangle with half times base times the height. Okay. Now next, we look at next polygon. We look at is it trapezium? So this is a trapezium. Okay. This is a trapezium. In trapezium, A and B are parallel sides. A is parallel to B. And this is our vertical height H. This is our vertical height H. So we find the area of the trapezium. This thing is half multiplied by the sum of the parallel side times height. So to find the area for A, to find the area of the area of what? To find the area of the trapezium is half multiplied by sum of the parallel side times the height. Okay, that will give us the area for a trapezium. Okay, and if we parallelogram, the next one is parallelogram. The area of the parallelogram is the height multiplied by the base. Height multiplied by base is the area for a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, we have two sides, two opposite sides are parallel. This is parallel to this, this is parallel to this. We have two parallel sides. Two pairs of parallel sides. For any trapezium, you have one pair of parallel sides. So in a trapezium again, we calculate the area we say was half multiplied by what the sum of the two parallel sides, a plus b, half bracket a plus b times h. So the formula for finding the area for a trapezium, half bracket a plus b times h. And then for a parallelogram, it's base times height. Okay. And if it's circle. For a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. The area of a circle is pi r squared. If the r is given, if the center of the circle is given, and the distance from the center to the circumference is r. So to calculate the area of a circle, we say is what? Area equals to pi times the radius squared. Pi times radius squared. Okay, so that will give us the area for a circle. So in case you to find the circumference of a circle as well, if you want to find the circumference of a circle, circumference of a circle is what? 2 pi r. Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. That's the formula for find the circumference or the perimeter. And now the circumference of the circle is the perimeter of the circle. So the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r or the perimeter of the circle is 2 pi r. But the area is pi r squared. Okay. Now example one, find the area of the parallelogram. Find the area of this parallelogram. The parallelogram because AB parallel to DC and BC parallel to AD. So how do you find the area? So we find the area. We say what area is what? The height multiplied by the base, and then the height must be perpendicular to the base, and then it's perpendicular. So we need to find the height here. Now we don't have the height. We need to find. So we need to use Pythagoras to find our height BE. Let BE we need to find because of the height. But we need Pythagoras to do that because this is perpendicular and this will also be a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle. And once we have a right angle triangle, then we can use what? Pythagoras. So use Pythagoras to find this height BE, the height of the triangle. So by saying what? I put in a squared equals to BE squared plus what? 3 squared. So 25 squared equals to BE squared plus 3 squared, which is 9. So subtract 9 from 25, you get 16. So B is equal to square root of 16, which is 4. So B E will be 4. So if B is 4, so to find the area, we're going to say 4. That's the height multiplied by the base. Base is what? We need to add all this together, both of them together. If, um, 3 plus 4 is 7. So 4 times 7 is 28. So 28 millimeter squared is this area for this uh, parallelogram. Again, for a parallelogram, the formula is height times the base. Height times base. So here we don't have the height. So we just first have to get our height first. So finding height, we said because this is 90 degree here, and because this and this is 33 meters, and this and this is 5, we can find this within we can find the third side of the triangle from Pythagoras. And once we have the top side, then we can use the top side to find our area. Okay. So same first step is to find BE. So use Pythagoras, AB equals to B squared plus A is squared. B E squared equals to 16, root of 16 is 4. So B is 4. So, and then after finding your BE, then you're going to find your area. Here it equals to the base times the perpendicular height. So the, the base is what? 7. And then the height is 4 and get 26 meter, millimeter squared. Hope you understand that. Now let's see another one now. Find the area of 
the following below, the following polygon below, this is the polygon. Okay, find the area of this. So this is a triangle. I'll find the area half times the base and the perpendicular height. The base and the perpendicular height. So half times 10 times five. Half times the base, half times 10 times the height five. So half times 10 times five is 25. Half times 10 is five. Five times five is 25. So the area of this will be 25 what centimeter squared. Centimeter, um, 25 units squared centimeter squared. Okay. Now this one is, is a rectangle. Okay, this is a rectangle. And then to find the area is simply the length multiplied by the breadth. The length multiplied by breadth. Length 10, breadth 5 multiplied to get what? 10 times 5, 50. 50 centimeter squared. That's the area for this rectangle. Okay. Now next is this. Calculate the area of this. How do you find the area of this? So this is a circle and the diameter is given as 10. The diameter is given as 10. So the first thing to find is the radius. So this is diameter. Diameter is a line running from one part of the circumference to the other part passing through the center. Again, diameter is a straight line from one part of the circumference to the other part of the circumference passing through the center. So if you have a line going like this with the diameter, if the line going from here, passing through the center of the diameter, you have a line from the circumference passing through the diameter, passing through the center of the diameter. So this diameter 10, you need to get the radius, you will half it. The radius is half of diameter. Diameter is two radii. So now radius will be 10 over two, and that will be five. So our radius is five. So to find the area, we say the area is pi r squared. So pi your calculator, radius is five, say five, five times five squared. So, and that will give you, punch that, you can give you some eight, comma, five, three, nine, eight. And then into the smart place, gives you some eight, comma, five, four. So round this one up. The nine is, when, when the number is more than four, you round it up. Round it up means you change to one, you add it to the preceding one, the one before it. So change this nine to one, add it to the time it was four. So you have to five four six squared in the area of this circle. So because it works out that the circle with diameter of the diameter 10, so therefore automatically the area must be 78,54 centimeters squared. Okay. Now this is another trapezium and um, parallelogram rather. This is another parallelogram. Okay. Now define the area, the same area is what? The base times the perpendicular height. The base times the perpendicular height. So in this case, our height is still not given. We don't have the height. To get our height, what do you do? You need to use Pythagoras. That is three, that is five. Okay, that is three, that is five. So with that, you can find our third side using Pythagoras theorem, the theorem of Pythagoras. I think um, five squared equals to three squared plus, call this x, x squared. So x squared will be equal to five squared minus three squared. So that's 25 minus nine. 25 minus nine is 16. So root of 16 is four. That means your height here is four. This side there is four. Okay, so height is four. And then this is the base. This used to be the base. So this here is the same as what it is. Okay. This length, because in parallelogram, opposite are parallel and equal. Opposite are parallel and equal in the parallelogram. It's called a parallelogram because opposite are parallel and equal. So this base, this, this is our base, right? As we used to know. And then it equals to this as well. So our base here is 10, 7 plus 3 is 10. And then we say our height here is 4. So four times ten gives us forty. Okay. So we're saying um, we first need to work out the height using the Pythagoras theorem. So find your height using Pythagoras theorem. Five squared minus three squared is sixteen. Root of sixteen is four. So find the square root of sixteen, and that will give four. Because this was h squared. So find h is squared, and that gives four. So height is four. So now we're not find the area. Area equals to base times the height. So this is the base, this is also the base. So the base is 10, the height is 4, 4 times 10 is 40. 
centimeter squared. Okay. Right. We go to the next one. This is another one, yeah. It's gonna be area of this. It's gonna be area of this triangle. It's gonna be area of this triangle. I'll find the area of this triangle. What do we do? It has a height that is perpendicular to the base. So that means you can find the area. You can see what? Um, the half times the base times the perpendicular height. But now the perpendicular height is missing. See the perpendicular height is missing. So we can consider this other right hand side triangle and find our height. We can use this triangle here and find our height using the theorem of Pythagoras. Using the theorem of Pythagoras, find this side. There is your hypotenuse opposite adjacent. Call your opposite x. So keep the theorem of Pythagoras, say, say hypotenuse squared 10 squared equals to x squared plus 8 squared. Okay, and then x squared equals to, or h squared, call it h. 10 squared equals to h squared plus 8 squared. So h squared equals to 10 squared minus 8 squared. So 10 squared minus 8 squared will be 36. 10 squared is 100, 8 squared is 64. 100 minus 64 is 36. So 8 squared is 36, and then 8 equals to square root of 36, which is 6. So h is equal to 6 centimeters. So our height is 6 centimeters. Our height is 6 centimeters. Now, how did we find the area? The question is to find the area of the triangle. So to find the area now, we say our area equals to half times base times height. So half times the base. The base is what? The base, we need to add this together. This all, both of them here is the base. So 12 plus 8 is 20. Multiply by our height, our height, which is what? 6. Remember, we calculated our height at 6. So from Pythagoras, we calculated our height at 6 by saying 10 squared. 100 minus, minus 8 squared 64, which was 36, 36, and then the square of 36 was 36. So height being 6, multiplied by, so the area of the triangle was half, and the base, base is 20 times the height 6. So the half times 6 times 20 is our area. So half of 6 is 3, 3 times 20 is 60. So 60 centimeter squared is the area of a triangle like this. Or if you have any shape, maybe a farmland, maybe a piece of cloth that have this shape, okay, or a farmland, or a compound, or a pool that have this shape and this dimension, that we find what the area of, of such then going to be 60 centimeters squared, okay, right. Now the next one, calculate the area of this. Calculate the area of this triangle. How do you find the area of this triangle? You see, you need to find the area of this triangle. What type of triangle is this? This is an isosceles triangle. This is an isosceles triangle, okay? This is an isosceles triangle. Why? Because two sides are what? Equal. So this is an isosceles triangle. So, the way the, the area of the triangle, we can create, you can construct a height. You can construct an height, but if you construct an height that goes from here up to this other third side of the triangle, then that height is going to bisect, going to be perpendicular to, going to bisect and perpendicular to the third side. Okay. So if you create a line that goes this way, then it's going to be perpendicular and bisect the third side. Okay, because this side is already equals to this side. Okay, and then we have a congruent triangle. So we have two congruent triangles. So by constructing a line goes to the third side here, then we have two triangles that are congruent, and then see what? And then from there, we can be able to find our area. So let's do that. Let's create a line that goes this way. We create a line that goes this way. All right, so there is five, there is five. So the line will bisect this six. That means we have three this side, three this side. And from there, we can be able to find the length of the side, which will be our height of the triangle. Okay. So we're going to create a height of the triangle. It gets better like construct the height, construct a line that goes from this 
edge to this edge. Okay, and then and then try to find the, 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 the value of the height. How do you find it? We know that the, the height is going to divide this side into two, we're going to bisect it into three, three. So now from here to here, so let's see what we say then. So we're saying the first, we first need to construct a vertical or perpendicular height. We need to create a perpendicular height or a vertical height. For an SLS triangle, we construct the perpendicular height between the two equal sides, then this line will bisect the third side. So when you construct your height, so to the towards the third side, then the, 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 the line, your continuous line will bisect it towards 33. And from there, we can able to calculate the area of the triangle by finding the the Pythagoras theorem to find this third side. Then it's 90, that will be 90. So there is 90 degree. Okay, if this is 90 degree, then we can use Pythagoras. So we're going to say 5 squared equals to 30 squared plus 8 squared. I put 10 squared equals to opposite plus I just squared. So 5 squared minus 3 squared equals to h squared. So h squared equals to 25 minus 3. h squared equals to h squared equals to 25 minus 9. And that is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So our height of the 4. Our height here is 4. Our height here is 4. Now, what we need to find the area now of the triangle. So the area will now be 4 multiplied by the base. 4 times 6. And that will be 24. So the unit of our, then multiply by half. Sorry. So now this can be the area of the triangle half times the base times the height. Half times the base and the height, or base times height divided by two. We can as well refer to this as base times height divided by two. So our base is four, no, our base is six, our height is four. So six times four is 24, times half is 12. 24 times half is 12, okay. All right. Okay, um, example seven, Find the area of this triangle here. Find the area of this triangle. An equilateral triangle with side 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. Find the area of the triangle. How do you find the area of your equilateral triangle with side 10 centimeters? How do you find the area of the equilateral triangle with side um, 10 centimeters? What do you do? The same thing we do, we create, we construct a height, a vertical height. And the vertical height should be such that it's going to bisect the third side into two halves. Why? Because this side equals this side. So if you create a line that goes this way, that line will bisect this third side. Remember, there is 10 centimeters. That means all the sides are 10 centimeters. Why? Because it's equilateral triangle. All the sides are equal. So 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. So when you create a line, your, your height that goes vertically like that. So there's going to be five, there's going to be five, and then it'll be 10. So with your 10, your with your five here, you can find the value of your height. I mean, your theorem of Pythagoras. And again, with 10 squared minus what? Five squared. 10 squared minus five squared to give you your height squared. So 10 squared is 100, five squared is 75. 100 minus 75 is 75. So your h, your height, will be your square root of what? 75. Square root of 75. So what square root of 75 is going to be? That's not sometimes when you pop a square, then you can leave it as a salt. Leave it simplify 70 root of 75 will be give you five root three. Five root three will be your height. And then you can multiply that with your base because then the height will be perpendicular with the base and then divide by two. Okay. So we first construct the vertical perpendicular height. Construct your vertical perpendicular height. And that will make this five take I mean five. For an equilateral triangle, the perpendicular height will bisect the third side. So the perpendicular height will bisect the third side. So this has been 10 by thickness divided to two equal halves. That is five, that is five. So use your Pythagoras find the value of this height. Now the height you can find by saying what? By using Pythagoras theorem. Saying 10 squared minus 5 squared. 10 squared is 100. 5 squared is 75. 100 minus 75 is 75. So h squared equals 75, h plus the square root of 75. Okay. And then, to now find the area now, our height is square root of 75. So that's the height square root of 
75. Now, to now find our area now. Well, our area, see what? Our area is what? Half times base times height. So half times our base. Our base is what? Our base is 10. And our height is root of 75. So then we have half times 10 times root of 75. Half times 10 times root of 75. Okay, and we do that to give us our height and um, the area of the or area of the triangle. Okay, do you understand? So we do that to give us the area of the triangle. All right, and then and then going to the next example. This is another and this is a trapezium now. Find the area of the trapezium. Find the area of the trapezium. We say the area is what half times a plus b times h. A of the trapezium is half times a plus b times the h. Okay, so now we need to find our h. H is not there. We need to find our h. So with Pythagoras again, we find our h. With Pythagoras, we find our h, our height here, yeah, because this is a right angle triangle. So Pythagoras says hypotenuse squared equals to opposite squared h squared times adjacent squared nine squared. So h squared equals to fifteen squared minus nine squared. Fifteen squared minus nine squared. Fifteen squared give you two to five. Nine squared is two to one. So subtract. 81 from 2 to 5, and they find the square root of that answer, you get your h. And with your h, they can find the area of the trapezium. Okay, so we're saying here, first we need to find our height using the theorem of Pythagoras. So h equals to 15 squared minus 9 squared. 15 squared 2 to 5, 9 squared 81. 2 to 5 minus 81 give you 144. So give you 144. And then to find your h, you find the square root of 144 so that you get your h. It was h squared that was equal to 144. To find your h, you find the square root of 144 and that will be 12. The square root of 144 is 12. So your height is 12. Now to now find the area now. To find the area of the trapezium, you see area equals to half bracket a plus b times h. So we see half bracket 12 plus 21 plus 9 times 20 times 12. Again, half times half open bracket 16 plus 9 plus 21. So this is our A, all these things is our B. 9 plus 21 give us 30. So basically, half bracket 16 plus 30 times our height 12. So we punch that and then we get our get our answer. So half of 25 and 21 and 9 is 30. 30 plus 16 is 46. So 46 times of 12. So half of 46 and 12. So that would give us two. Or say half of 12 is six, six times half of 12, six, six and 46 will give you 276 centimeters squared. That would be the area for the trapezium. Okay. Right, the next one. Find the expression for the area of this figure in terms of z and pi. The circle had a radius of minus 3z minus 2. Write the answer in expanded, not factorized. Okay, now find an expression for the area. Find an expression for the area in terms of z and pi. That means your, your, by your answer, your answer must have z, your answer must have pi. Find the area in terms of z and pi. For the circle that has a radius of minus three z minus two, so the radius of the circuit is minus three z minus two. So write your answer in an expanded form. So this is a circle with your radius minus three z minus two. So write an expression for the area. So for the area, we always know that area of the circuit is pi r squared. The area of the circuit is pi r squared. So pi we keep our r is what minus three z minus two. Then have what minus three z minus two all squared. So then what do we do? We then need to what open up this, we need to expand this, we need to follow this. 
then you say minus three z minus two into minus three z minus two and then that will give us minus three z times minus three z that'll give you positive positive nine z squared then negative negative what six z then then plus six then multiply it by five and plus four rather and then multiply it by five by 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 by, by pi the pi them type out everything so and they're gonna have nine pi z squared plus four pi z plus four pi okay so that should be the end of our lesson for today so um this one is another takeaway question find an area for the area of the figure in terms of x and pi the circle has a radius of x plus four right to answer in the expanded form so this is also a good example we can look at so tomorrow we'll carry on with um more examples of measurements um take care of, of yourself and remain safe